Today's episode, we are going to be replacing the uh, valve cover gaskets on the 2010 Jeep Wrangler. Just carefully cutting open this uh, kit. Ideally, you want to open these things up at the uh, auto parts store if you're buying it from there. Because they often will be wrong or missing pieces, what have you. So, this one is a Felpro part number VS50599R. This comes with both of your valve cover gaskets. And then, it should be 16 of these little o-ring style gaskets Oops, sealers. 6, 8, 2, 4, 6, 8 we're good there so just verifying got all the stuff that comes with it this runs about 20 bucks if I did not mention it already before I uh, attack anything I will be hitting these bolts right here with uh, some PB blaster because that those ones don't look bad on the spark plug module bracket deal but these valve cover ones that believe they're eight millimeter and they look a little crusty so I'm gonna hit all those with some lubrication before I get started and uh, maybe once or twice I'll let that sit for a moment I think you're gonna need a deep socket eight millimeter but I'll run through what I'm using as we go and uh, I think the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the negative uh, battery post terminal and uh, that's where we start and then we'll get into getting all this out and go from there. As mentioned, starting off by taking the negative cable off here. This is with a 10 millimeter, as most of you probably know. And this style is just the clamp one, so you just gotta loosen it, and tuck it down. Negative connection is off. Uh, with the Wranglers, as most of you probably know, you can fold these back to the lay on the windshield. I was gonna do that. Uh, got my t-shirt here for padding but the garage door is gonna hit it and that and I'm not gonna move this out just to put the windshield back and back it back in here just to make it a little bit easier for me I don't think it would be too bad um, then if you got air compressor you can take that and blow out all the dirt and debris that may be just resting on top of the motor so uh, from here I'm going to loosen up this screw uh, unplug the sensor just take this whole top off so I have more room to work and uh, just kind of start I think we're going to start on the passenger side here and start taking pieces off this and hopefully not break any bolts and have any issues. If you guys watched any other videos, I have uh, like power steering flush I just did. You know, this airbox has four clips. One up here, one right here, one down there, and one on the other side, basically all four corners. Then you can unplug this breather hose there. We'll be unplugging it over there later, but for now just tuck it aside, and then we'll lift this all off.
I'm just going to take the filter out just to prevent any problems down the road if it were to get damaged. From here, I'm going to uh, think, work on these bolts, see how tight they are, remove these little plastic connectors down here, and get that kind of all loosened up. These bolts are 8 millimeter. I got a deep socket. Uh, you could also use a 5 16 if you don't have the 8. Sprayed these. Uh, I'm using a quarter drive ratchet. Got an extension here too. I sprayed these bolts yesterday because they look pretty crusty. So I'm hoping it uh, kind of helps free it up because I really don't want to fight with any broken bolts. Alright, that one came loose pretty well. Then you got eight total, but there's going to be one right there, one down there, and one in the far corner. So it's going to be tricky on some of these to get to, but I think we can manage, hopefully. I've seen somebody had to get a swivel for these back ones here. I'm hoping not to have to do that, but we'll see. Um, these up here just have plastic kind of, I don't know what you call them, just plastic clips that go onto the bolt itself and should be able to slide off easy with the flathead. That right there is what I'm talking about. The little plastic uh, piece over top. There's a uh, one, two, three, and maybe that last one has one, I'm not sure. But that's kind of all the way down. Yep, so you just pry it off. I was using this tool. It's kind of like a Christmas tree puller. So these long bolts, that's why you need a deep socket. Uh, so far, three for three on uh, cracking them loose. This back one does appear like it's going to be a uh, trouble getting to without that swivel. So I'm going to try it when I move some stuff out of the way, but it's not looking good. All right, since the last time I've seen you guys, I was desperate to get this hood back and thought, hey, why not put the garage door down? push it back see if it clears it did all worked out great so then I came back started back on this hose right here that was connected that white t-shirt is I just put a t-shirt and a rubber band on there just so nothing falls in there um, got this off easy with some channel locks broke it free pull it off uh, air box makes a great toolbox I took my wire harness puller or your flathead just to make some more room for myself there's two little Christmas trees down there same with that one right here and then there's one right there that goes down to that bolt just a little bit more room and then I started back on working those plastic piece off, pieces off right here and then the two that are back here and they extend all the way to the back over here is a plastic piece to hold your spark plug wires these three they hold them in place and clamp down um, if you can I'd say unplug your spark plug wires it'll make it a lot easier but let me show you that bracket real quick so this is what the bracket looked like uh, basically these two 
around the motor or the valve cover and then this back one went back behind the dipstick and all that uh, I got two of them successfully unclipped without breaking this one broke right here the little tab front one no big deal what I did was come in here just work that tab try to get under it and that freed it up same here and then I pried it but it's brittle over time I'm sure it's just due to age too but that one did break off and then back here I just did not care because it's pretty tight back there so I just worked that and then eventually got a bigger flathead and went under there and just popped it off and luckily it didn't break but that one I just didn't care but your plugs are uh, marked as well and uh, one and three are down here they start then five is the third short one back here but yeah this thing would be easier too to get off with the wires unplugged if you don't unplug them like I did you can get it out but uh, maybe just don't click these but fold them back down so they're not catching on everything when you're trying to pull it out so that was a big problem is just these kept catching everything too so that's where I'm at now got that off and I guess I'm uh, gonna go look to free up some more of those valve bolts here so it's pretty crusty as well oh crossing the fingers here It's moving. Alright, that one's good. It's back one. I may need a longer extension. And then, after that, I'm going to work on those inside ones. See if I can uh, get those without swivel. And I'll uh, update you guys from there. Progress report here is the all the bolts are broken free. So now... It should just be a matter of loosening them up and pulling the cover off. Um, these two right here do need a swivel socket. So if you have a quarter swivel, great. If not, maybe pick one up before you start. Uh, or you can MacGyver something up like I had to. This back corner, and then there's one down here. Those are both deep socket. But I use a swivel on both of those as well. Uh, this one... You might, if you have a shorter extension, you might be able to uh, work this one, but my extension was too long and wouldn't work, but the swivel action did. So what I did on these two was I got a 5 16 3 drive, got that, then I went ahead and I had a swivel for a 3 8 drive, so I grabbed that. But that was too loose and wobbly to get on the actual bolt. So, trick is to wrap some uh, electrical tape around it. I just did one pass and then a pass on the bottom. Just electrical tape. So that way it made a little bit more stiffer, but it could still move. And connected those two, put it on there. Got my 3H drive with the extension. And I was able to pop those two bolts off. And then back here, I did the same thing, except I grabbed my 3 8 converter to the quarter so I could use my 8 millimeter deep socket to fit on those bolts. So now I'm just going to go ahead and loosen them all up. Uh, just make sure when you're doing these. Uh, if you can get a flashlight on there when you're turning, make sure you're not stripping them out. But other than that, they're not really tight, so it shouldn't take much to break them free. But uh, off camera, I'm just going to loosen all those up. And then see if we can get this valve cover off, because I know they tend to be stuck on there good for a minute. So i about to work that off, and then we'll uh, get ready to get the new gasket on, get the old off, and clean it up. Another problem, granted we broke them free, we cannot technically loosen them now because this socket's 
too big and it just rubs. So we fixed one problem. Now we're in, at another one. This one I can't really get around because the bolt's going to back itself out. And this is already pretty much as far as it'll go. So can't really get them any looser. Um, I guess you could try to do like long needle nose and do it by hand. But that seems like a lot of trouble. Especially when you got to try to get back in there and tighten them down. So probably got to bite the bullet and just wait on this side and go later and get a quarter drive uh, wobble socket. Uh, but not to waste time, I'm going to hop over to the driver's side and start working on that side, taking it apart, see what bolts we can access over there and if we need it over there as well. At least we got most of the disassembly part of it done instead of just standing around all day. Alright, we're on the driver's side. I'm going to start the disassembly over here. Uh, I'll be pulling this completely off that and this the spark plug wires from the other side and then there's one bolt here and there's another one right there where my finger is I'm gonna take those off those are 10 millimeter I'm gonna remove this and then work on that bracket underneath I think I leave these spark plugs on the wires and just drape this down, I think. That's the plan, at least. So, with a little bit of tugging, got the plugs off. Again, when you go to replug them in, it's all labeled. I don't know why it's focusing so bad, but three, one, five. Then, on the wire themselves, if you move it, you see like five. And the rest have their numbers as well, so you won't be uh, put them in the wrong spots. Now, for this connector, it's kind of it's a little hard for me working on the camera, but you basically just work that locking clip up like that. Be careful, they are brittle and break easy. And then push this tab in the back and pull. crusty there, but pull that, that's it, and then uh, now I'm going to go ahead and grab 10 millimeter socket, just note on the valve cover bolts, they do not come out. They will stay in the uh, cover itself, so you don't have to worry about dropping them in when you're taking those off. So that's how long those ones are. Alright, now that's broken free. Just going to lay that down gently, down there. Looks like these bolts are the same size, so we'll get there. This is the bracket I was talking about. You got two nuts down there. Looks like one up here, one right there. And then right back here. Right back here is where I was talking about. It was on the back of the bolt head, but we just pulled that one out, so good to go there. Those are full four bolts I just showed you. Those are all going to be 13 millimeter, or you could use half. We might have to uh, come up here and take off that bolt and Christmas tree off the alternator just because this might, that arm might be stuck on there too. I'm just happy to use this one. I This is a cobalt tool I bought years ago and it just helps you with the long bolts to go through the top. It's kind of handy, but it's not a big ratchet, so it's kind of tough to get leverage. But I don't get to use it as often, so I figure I'd try to bust it out here. Yeah, something's a little bit too. 
too uh, tight though. I got to use that one. So I was using a half on this one. Like I said, 13 millimeters works as well. Just going to go to the deep socket, half drive. Just work these off. Alright, looks like the whole stud came out. Loosen that up, and then this was the Christmas tree I was talking about right here. It's gonna actually I might be able to leave that after loosening uh, this nut off. Let's see if we can. These are brittle half the time, and they just break so. Alright, I think we might be good. Yeah, so just loosen this one a little bit. Once you get that nut off this one, you can just kind of move that to the side. Alright, so we got everything loosened. These two big ones right here, they go on the bottom. This nut came off of that stud that I still had to remove. And this stud came from right there. So grab my ratchet again and again half for 13 millimeter loosen this up that's just another stud they appear to be the same in size there's that bracket I was talking about uh, never a bad idea if you want, you know, to clean off the rust, throw a new coat of paint on it if you got time, but, um, this one ain't as bad as I thought, but that bottom lip has some decent rust. But, that's off, so next, I'm going to grab my channel locks, grab this, pull it up, and pull that hose off the PVC valve. You know, I did a video on this, replacing the valve uh, early on in the series, but go check that video out if you are interested, but it's a pretty easy fix in itself. So it's going to grab that like any other hose clamp. I was trying to move it up further, but we got that plastic covering in the way. So you can get it past there, you just gotta slide through that little gap that it gives you. And that pops right off. Stick that up here, just tuck it away. And that's what uh, I replaced before. They're pretty inexpensive and easy to change, but. Uh, so, now that's done. We are just going to, I guess, start with uh, cracking the bolts on this side loose and they look a lot better shaped than the other side so there's some hope there up there is a little dingy but uh, and then you got one of those plastic clips over the bolts over there other than that it looks a lot more accessible than the other side so let's uh, grab our stuff and get into that apologize for any wind noise wind is kicked up here Slipping.
So right there we got another plastic cap deal. Just gonna work that off. There we go. That's the trick. Come on, that at this side. Pick it up. Got these off uh, Amazon. I think uh, 15 bucks, maybe tops, free shipping. Came with this one, one that's more of a 45 maybe degrees, and then I think a clamp style one too. Little pouch, so not bad. So that one's exposed. Let me grab my socket. Come in from this angle. Okay. That one's nice and free. This was the uh, pouch I was talking about. Look at that one that I've been using. Another one like it. Not 45, but 180 to mine. Same setup. Then you get the nifty pouch. Velcro. Let's pouch off. Then you get a set of the clamp style ones. Pliers. Uh, mostly I got these for like the uh, wheel wells and stuff, getting those out, but they're pretty much any Christmas tree style. You can see like right here, you just slide that under, squeeze it, pop it out. Try to save as many of those type of Christmas trees as you can, so you have to replace them or zip tie. So like the other side, we got a bolt back there and one over there. Which it kind of looks like there's more room to work, so we're going to try to get those out with what I have. So it looks like we might be able to. Uh, the PVC valve, if you guys are taking all this apart, not a bad idea to change that. It's usually uh, overlooked, but very cheap uh, and if inexpensive uh, maintenance thing you can do. And, uh, go check the video out for that. I'll leave it in the link uh, below. So you guys can go check that out. Pretty easy though. Just if you're going to pry up on stuff, just be careful. A lot of this stuff is plastic and can crack. So when taking that out. So we have broken that one free. I'll get to that in a second. But um, this top one, I was able to use the setup I did on the other side with the swivel and all that. Got it pretty loose. I don't know if it's all the way loose. But that one is tough to grab onto. So I moved down from that to the bottom corner one over here. Uh, you need deep socket for that. And all this is in the way. And with that setup, it will not fit, so I couldn't need that quarter swivel socket. And then the one in the back top corner is a shallow one, but I'm not going to get that without a uh, swivel probably. So I'm not really going to fight it if I don't need to. So those three I'm just leaving out for now. They're just going to hang out until I can go purchase the socket I need later for the swivel action. But this one... That one would not come out for nothing. Uh, I even tried dropping down to 7 mil, see if that would just fit. Would not, uh, but I could not get a socket to just bite onto. It just kept wanting to round itself out. And before it gets bad, because it's really not too bad looking right now, I pulled out my extractor socket. I don't know if the camera will focus on it. Maybe. Either way, this socket, this one is the 8mm, but uh, I got a set of those at Harbor Freight a long time ago when I was doing the EGR valve in the back on this thing. Um, so I took this, I didn't crank on it hard because these bolts aren't that tight. I just put it on there, broke it loose, 
left it be. And this is a 3 8 drive. And then I just threw my 8 millimeter on there, 6 point socket, and it came right off loose. So that way I broke it free because it's not tight and all is good. But uh, these are too expensive. I think I pay like 10, 12 bucks or something, maybe a little bit more at Harbor Freight. Comes in a set, different sizes. This was the smallest one I had, luckily. But uh, yeah, save the day. But uh, I'm gonna have to hold off to get the swivel later, and then I will be able to hopefully get the rest of these bolts off, pull the covers, clean them up, and you already know, get the gaskets on there. So. This is day two now, um, not because of the job itself, just I had to wait till like 6.30 to get another vehicle to go get that swivel, that quarter swivel socket, wobble socket, whatever you want to call it. So, it took longer because normally for something simple like that, I'll go to my local hardware store to support them and I, I got in there and for just the quarter swivel they wanted 750 and I was it's hard for me to pay that for just that small swivel so I went to uh, Harbor Freight which isn't that much farther and for 699 I got Three eighths, the quarter and a half. So obviously, probably won't be as you know good in quality, you know. But you're going to get a lot more for your buck. And realistically, it's just a swivel. I don't think it's going to be a beat on regularly. So these will probably last pretty decent amount of time. But Besides from that, I uh, went ahead, got that back one out. They're all loose on this side now. I went ahead and to make a little bit more room to get back in this bottom corner, I unplugged the hose that's right here. And then there's a plastic piece that also will go on that bolt, top bolt down here. That piece goes on the bolt, and then that was plugged in there. Pulled that out, just shoved it up there with the rest of them because it made it a lot easier getting to the bottom and top one. Bottom, I don't think it actually affected too much compared to the top far one over there. But that's where we're at now. Now I'm going to uh, try to get this valve cover loose because I know it can be uh, stuck on there a bit and remove it, clean up the surfaces, and get ready for that new gasket finally. I'm gonna try cracking it loose with just my hand. Okay, well, didn't know if that would work or not, but I guess it does. I've seen some videos where they're actually having to uh, go at it for a minute, but it seems like the side came off fairly easy. So make sure all your bolts are indeed loosened. There we go. What I did there was I just grabbed a hold of the bolt in the front and just wiggled and shook it a bit. That seemed to help. The idea is to push, lift it up, push it back, and come out with it. So you got the alternator right here. So see how much uh, problem that poses. Try to be careful not to kick up any dirt and dust. So the plan now, after I change out and clean the cylinder, the valve cover, just gonna go ahead and uh, clean up the surface here. 
you typically want to try to use just a plastic gasket scraper I don't know if I have one but if you are going to use like a metal scraper just be careful not to gouge the surface because that could uh, cause leaks so we'll see how bad this one is So not too bad Definitely, you'll know they're brittle and really damaged if you're uh, bending it and it's snapping in pieces, but this one is not, so. So you want to make sure you have a good uh, working surface, something better than a recycling bin, but it is what it is. So I'm going to just throw some brake cleaner on here, clean up this top uh, cover, and then... Uh, from there, I get the gasket on, change out these rubber grommets right here that came with the kit, and uh, start the assembly part on the driver's side, and then we can go to the passenger, knock that out, and uh, hopefully all is good. I'm just going to pull these out now, but I'm going to lay them where they came out at, so that way they don't get mixed up or changed or anything like that. And also, in my case, I'm going to uh, take that bolt that started rounding out and uh, flatten this size a little bit more just to hopefully prevent any more issues in the future. Alright, so I roughly cleaned the uh, cover, nothing fancy, just enough to get it clean, got the inside. Uh, make sure the holes are cleaned, make sure the groove for the gasket's all cleaned out free of uh, debris and oil that's pretty much it just pressing this in now and then I will get these off and uh, change those out and we'll uh, clean the surface and then start assembling so for these little rubber grommet ones I'm just using some snips to cut it off you could probably just get a utility knife as well. Basically just snipping it. That'll show. There we go. Snipping it. Throwing it off. Grab the new one. It's the top there. The bottom with that little lip right there. That face is down. So when you put it on, you just shoved over top of the other one of the bolt and you see that little lips facing down just make sure that's right and if you forget just uh, verify it on an old one so your bolts right here when you push them through that little lip is going to catch this side of the gasket which is well, it holds them in place from falling out. So just insert it to the top. Just work the gasket around it. That's it. So I went ahead and cleaned the uh, edge here. I know some of it don't look like it, but um, I don't want to go too crazy. I used went light with this and then in some of the tight spots. I did use the flathead, which I don't recommend, but went gentle as I could just to get some up off there. And then when you're cleaning it, just what I was doing was uh, wrapping my finger with the rag and just hitting brake cleaner on it and just wiping. But as I wiped, I pulled away from the inside to prevent any more dirt from possibly falling in there that you don't want. So... It's a little tricky with the top portion because you got a lot of dirt shoved up there already. So you got to be careful of that. But uh, if you remember, just get a plastic uh, gasket scraper and you can go to town on that. Try to do this around you guys so you guys can check it out. Just 
just gonna try to ease it in the same way I took it out. While trying not to uh, disturb any of the dirt that's on top of this intake manifold. Okay. I'm going to hand start most of them that I can reach. Top two, I'll hand start with the socket and then wherever that is. But I'm just going to spin it by hand using the socket and then I'm going to snug them up by hand and I'm going to start from the inside and work my way out and crisscross the, over the top just to uh, make sure it's even pressure on it. So I cracked open the uh, old Haynes book and if I'm reading this right at the bottom it says valve cover to cylinder head bolts 105 inch pounds. That's a valve cover so seems like a lot so I looked it up in forms and one said with RTV 55 inch pounds, another said without RTV 44 inch pounds. A handful of people said tighten them by hand, so I'm going to do that. Just use my small quarter ratchet and not to uh, over tighten or anything. I'm just going to snug them all up and hopefully, uh, no leaks. Sorry for bouncing you guys around. I uh, had that cover on and everything. Just the top two bolts up in that area. You can't really hand start, so you gotta try to do it with the socket and just the extension. Feels like they might cross thread, so I just had to fight with it for a little bit. Decided to come over here, knock this side out. Um, these bolts came out just fine with the swivel socket, so. That was easy. Got those out. I just pretty much pulled this up, took the cap off, and broke it free a little bit too. If you can't get the side over here free, that kind of helped. And I just slid it out. Did the same cleaning. Everything is over there. Slid it back in. And then just uh, snugged them up by hand with the uh, quarter etch. And that's pretty much it. Just going to uh, reassemble this side, which... So it's the fun part, but I think we will be starting with the plastic uh, brace piece that held the uh, spark plug wires in down there. Okay, so I got that spark plug wire bracket back in. Again, the uh, numbers are on the cross number braces here connections one three five and again on the wires themselves so if you want to make that easier for yourself you can always go ahead and unplug the spark plugs themselves then you'll have a little bit more room to work with and might be a little bit easier but that's just what I did then this little clip right here just slides right back onto that bolt. There's a little black wire protectors kind of what you see on the uh, wire harness. On the spark plugs just push those down too. Then we'll come over here. I took off that. So I went ahead and just push that back on. Took this Christmas tree out right here. This gray one. Push that back down. Then this will just go straight back down again. Breather hose goes down here.
then this part will connect to the air box itself once I put that on. Start off with the uh, reinstalling the dirty filter. Grab the top. It's got your four clips. And then just come in with your flathead, or if you're using the socket, do that audible click, and push that red tab. There you go. So we buttoned up the other side. The only thing we have over there is the negative cable to reconnect. Uh, came back to this side, like I said earlier, those two top ones I thought might have been cross-threading. Not sure. Maybe just needed to walk away for a minute, but all seems good back there now. So, yeah. Got them all tightened up. Um, the way I did it, did uh, the center, either way you can do, but I did here, up there, down here, up there, and then just pick a side and go top to bottom or whatever. So center out. So here's that hose. Here's that gray piece. There's two bolts down here. You'll see. It went to the top one. Nothing apparently goes to that bottom one, so I guess if you want to, you could hook it up down there. This, you can adjust whatever you want. Though it does feel like it should go through here. Pretty sure it does, but not a big deal. This way it can sit up like it's supposed to. This top bolt, remember, has uh, the plastic piece that you'd slide down. That's to the sensor up there. wipe off the uh, PCV valve. I'm not sure if I was calling it PVC or PCV earlier, but it's a uh, PCV valve, I believe it is. Proper name. That just sits right in there. And as earlier mentioned, that just Starts on the bottom here, other one over here, one of the studs up here, other stud. Box back up here. Looked it up, I believe it was called a distributorless ignition system. Distributorless ignition system. Make sure you just kind of spin the hose clamp in your direction too for uh, pushing it down. And honestly, probably better off 
doing that before you put this on because now I got that to fight around. Give a little tug, make sure you're good. You could always throw some dielectric grease or gel on the uh, insides of the spark plug boot thing here. Just makes it a little bit easier to come off and on. I'm going to leave them for now. So I want to do spark plugs and wires not too long down the road, so I'm not too worried about it right now. Make sure those are good. Still have this to put back. I noticed it just needs a hair over and it doesn't move, so when you're putting the mount back on, just go ahead and throw this on that bolt before tightening them because otherwise you might just either loosen this one enough so it does move enough over which I don't think it's gonna or just go ahead and take this nut off or bolt I should say long bolt and just do that So easy fix. Now I'm gonna throw that other nut on there, and then this just plugs back in there. Start it up. Once I get the cable connected again, uh, get all my tools off. Check the. Areas where I was working, make sure there's no loose bolts, missing things, nothing disconnected. And um, at least start it, see if there's any leaks, and then kind of give you a report from there. You do know down the road, besides spark plugs, this gasket on the exhaust manifold is pretty shot, so that's probably uh, spring next year or something. Real quick, just double checking, I noticed this one was not done, so I pushed that on the bolt, it's just that plastic piece, that wire to keep it over. Um, and then this hose, gotta plug that into the side of the air box. Connected the battery just now. I think we're uh, good to start it. So I started up, it's been running for about five minutes. It appears there are no leaks going on that I can see. Went around both sides. Um, seems to be a successful uh, job. Initially a little bit of smoke, but uh, that cleared up. I'm guessing there's probably oil that dripped at some point on the manifolds or just cleaning them. Stuff like that and it's burning off. But other than that, everything appears to be good. So, uh, Give that job a thumbs up. If you guys like this video, check out more from Full Scale Fixes. Uh, Beyond the Scale RC is on there as well. Subscribe if you have not. And go check out Dude Bono for some merch. And I'll see you guys next time.